First question on this Michigan football report audience mailbag it is quite the doozy coming in from Younger Harbaugh, one of our YouTube viewers. He says, if Jim Harbaugh leaves or retires in three years and Sharon Moore isn't on staff still, so that's in three years, 23, 24, so after the 2025 season, who would be the top coaching targets hashtag Michigan that is quite the doozy of a question I'm going to answer it here in just a moment but I did want to thank our sponsor today the Michigan football report is sponsored by Rex MD if you want the best in men's telehealth take advantage of their best deal they've ever offered and save up to 90 percent and only pay two dollars per dosage go to rexmd.com slash chat I want to know from you guys. Answer down below in the comments. I'm going to make this the pinned comment in today's video. So scroll down, you'll see the pinned comments right at the top of the comment section. Reply to that. Who is the best running back in Michigan football history? The tough one, I think my answer is going to be Mike Hart because he's still at the leaderboard of all time yards, carries, et cetera, et cetera. I think an argument can be made for, you know, Biak Matuka in a one year uh, stint, maybe even uh, Tyrone Wheatley, Anthony Thomas, or others. So let me know the best running back in Michigan football history. All right, we are taking your questions here on our Michigan Football Live Q&A. Use hashtag Michigan or Super Chat to get on the show. As always, anytime you're watching us live, you can use hashtag Michigan or Super Chat. We'll put you on the show and part of these uh, live mailbags that we put on the channel is on-demand videos in the following days. Jeremy Clore has got a question here, uh, and then we'll go back to the, uh, the Harbaugh question, younger Harbaugh. We'll dip back to that one we tease at the top of the show. Jeremy Clore says, what game other than Ohio State will give Michigan the toughest test this season? I think Penn State on the road will be a good test. Um, the video we put out uh, after the live show on Friday that we started the show with we said, uh, all my game predictions. I predict the Michigan to win 12 games, including the Big Ten schedule and the Big Ten championship game. Uh, let's see what happens to the playoff. I didn't give a prediction for Penn State. At Penn State is going to be the toughest game of the year outside of the game against Ohio State. It's a road game. We saw Ohio State had to have phenomenal play down the stretch last year, like JT Tua Mala Mala had to have like three or so turnovers and kept stripping the ball and intercepting it to get that win. Uh, and they should have an upgraded quarterback this year with Drew Aller. So if James Franklin has any coaching ability, Penn State's going to go on themselves a great three-year run last year and the next two. I put it as 50-50. It's going to depend on how Drew Aller performs what we think of him coming out of their spring practice, and of course, and then as you start hearing rumblings coming out of fall camp in August. So I'll give a prediction on that probably the week of the season, late August, early September. Go back to the question from Younger Harbaugh. So he said, if Jim Harbaugh leaves or retires in three years, so that'll probably be after 30, 25, 2025 season, okay, uh, and Sharon Moore is not in the staff. So that means either they fired him or he's moved on to take another offensive coordinator job or maybe more likely a head coaching job at another school. So I'm just going to go with that one. That Moore, he's not going to get fired. He will be a head coach at a smaller school. Let's just say that in this scenario. Who will be the top coaching targets for Michigan? Well, if they get the ball rolling and Jesse Minter's still on staff, and he's been on the staff now for four years at this point, Minter would have to be the, the proper guy. If Mike Hart backfills Harbaugh, he would probably be right up there, 1-1A. One and one A. Sure, more as well. If he said success, right? It all depends. If he goes somewhere and just completely, you know, struggles, goes four and eight at some school like Indiana, then he's not going to be a candidate. Outside of those three, it's too far off to really consider. I still do think that uh, Luke Fickle, who's now Wisconsin, I know he's an Ohio State guy. I know that's his dream job, but if he does well at Wisconsin, he's got no loyalty there. We saw the last couple off seasons in college football. Brian Kelly left Notre Dame to go to LSU. Uh, Lincoln Riley left. Uh, Oklahoma to go to USC. Coaches are flip, flipping schools left and right now that you never thought would in the past. So Michigan, no matter who it would be, they would probably swing for the fences. And then if they didn't get the coach they were looking for, whoever that is, uh, probably fall back to one of the guys on staff. I'll ask you guys, though, will Jim Harbaugh be Michigan's coach in three after three years? So four seasons from now in 2026, will Harbaugh have that kind of longevity? It means he'll be over a decade at Michigan's coach. He'll probably go into what? In three years from now, he'll be going to like his 11th season or so with Michigan. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Guys, we all want to be at our best performance and feeling nervous and not performing your best in the bedroom. That can be a confidence killer. But don't worry, RexMD is here to help. As the most trusted leader in men's telehealth, RexMD makes it easy, discreet, and affordable to get generic and branded Viagra or Cialis online. No embarrassing trips to the doctor or insurance copays are required. With RexMD, you can talk to a medical professional 
create a personalized plan, and get your product shipped straight to your door within two days. And they don't just have to be ED medication. They also offer sexual health, hair growth, pain relief, and sleep aid medications. Plus, you can save up to 90% on your ED treatment with Rex MD. Don't let ED come between you and your relationships, dates, or encounters, if you know what I'm saying. Take advantage of their best deal ever offered and save up to 90% off and pay only $2 per dosage with our exclusive link. You see it right down there at the bottom of the screen, rexmd.com slash chat for this limited time deal. Go to rexmd.com slash chat. Starter packs of generic Viagra or Cialis are now available to our viewers and you get 90% off only $2 per dosage. Go to the link, rexmd.com slash chat. Thank you so much to RexMD for sponsoring today's show. Tom Nash coming in from question. James, thoughts on Lloyd Carr's grandson not going to Michigan? Well, uh, it wasn't great. I think Notre Dame and Ohio State and Michigan State fans all laughed at Michigan, especially when you got Lloyd Carr at the ceremony wearing that the hat, uh, Notre Dame hat. It hurt last summer when it happened. Uh, last June, I think he committed to Notre Dame after his sophomore year in high school. But um, Michigan got, got ultimately what I think is a better player in Jaden Davis. Now, um, Dante Moore would have been a nice uh, you know, in-between in the 2023 class uh, to be a freshman this year to kind of bridge the gap after J.J. McCarthy because after the season, right, Michigan doesn't really have any proven quarterback talent. They might be relying on a true freshman in Jaden Davis, but it stinks because he's going to Notre Dame. I think we'll find out it'll be a good college quarterback, not a star, and Michigan probably sees Jaden Davis as a higher ceiling, higher floor. So we'll come in. You know, more ready to play and probably can you know reach the heights like a J.J. McCarthy or better as Michigan quarterback where maybe the knock on C.J. Uh, Carr is that he is like a game manager and certainly not a superstar or NFL level quarterback. Thanks question for Tom. It stinks. It hurts. I wish him the best. He's not going to play Michigan probably um, and you know live on the Carr name, make it look good. But I was really surprised. Your grandpa was the head coach at Michigan. Maybe you want to get out from his shadow, but uh, uh, I thought he was a for sure Wolverine. Mark Majkowski, longtime viewer, one of our day ones. He says, who is the highest O-line seat in ceiling between uh, Hinton, Henderson, Barnett, uh, Carson, Barnhart, Barnett, Barnhart, and Trent A. Jones, I'm guessing. Miles Hinton, um, Ladarius Henderson, Carson Barnhart. Good one. Uh, I don't think it's Hinton or Jones. I think it's going to be backups this year, um, and maybe we'll get one year to start if you have some departures after this season. They might be your stars in 2024. I would say... I don't know, maybe Carson Barnhart. I, I don't know what we're going to get out of Ladarius Henderson because he's not played at uh, you know a school that I think is known in a program for having a great running attack or even, you know, I don't know, Jack, what's their offense known for these days at Arizona State? Is it your running offense, passing offense, or just an offense? Just an offense. So we'll see. I don't want to, you know, he could end up being one of the better ones. He's a three-year starter for most of the last three years for Arizona State. So it could be him. I would certainly rank him over uh, Miles Hinton or Trent A. Jones. And I'm still excited about Carson Barnhart. He came in last year, was a sixth offensive lineman, stole the job from Trent A. Jones. So I'll give him the bump up there. And is now solidifying himself as a multiple-year starter. You never know. He could end up being an All-Big Ten player this year if uh, he continues to improve. So I'm going to guess Carson Barnhart, but I'll readjust that when we see what uh, Ladarius Henderson does in a Michigan football uniform. If you guys love Michigan football and it's your first time watching or you've watched in the past and have yet to subscribe, make sure you are doing so. It's YouTube.com slash Michigan TV. Uh, if you're watching on your, uh, your computers, there's a little subscribe button below the video. If you're watching on mobile, maybe you got depending on what service you have, make sure you hit our uh, channel, subscribe, so you always get the Michigan football report in your YouTube. YouTube feed. Next question coming in from the Don. He says, who leaves or transfers in? So who leaves and transfers in when portal opens up again in May? Um, I got in trouble a couple years ago, not real trouble, but I had some, you know, there's some parents of players that DM me like not very happy. Cause I kind of did a projection of like my five players who I think are likely to transfer after spring ball. And you know, my son's not transferring. You're a liar. And so I'm going to avoid mentioning actual names uh, at this moment because there's still speculation. Um, but we'll know in a couple weeks, uh, 17 days, 16, 17 days from now. Where I will say you should start looking is in, in a couple places. Number one, I think wide receiver. I think you might get two wide receivers who end up transferring after spring practice. And with Andrew Anthony transferring, et cetera, Ronnie Bell, the wide receiver position is going to be very thin. Now, I also could see Michigan going and getting a wide receiver or two in the transfer portal. Michigan already brought in three offensive linemen, so... 
Offensive line, I've heard one player that might be in my two deep, one player that's not in the two deep that could transfer as well. So uh, I bet we'll see four to six transfers out of the Michigan football program. I would guess the majority is on offense, and then there's one guy for sure in the secondary, a second-year player, safety, let's just say, who was very highly rated that really hasn't got too uh, much in uh, playing time last year and is not projected to get much playing time in his second year. Is also a third-year player, a uh, corner from uh, the West Coast, I think may transfer after spring practice. KMoney2KGG says, what do you think if we go 13-0 and we play in the first round and lose to a Bama or Georgia? Would it be uh, that much of a disappointment if we keep it close? Well, in this scenario, Michigan's 13-0. They're likely going to be a top two seed, if not the number one seed in the playoff. So that means that Georgia or Alabama, like, it would have to be the worst of those two teams, I'm guessing, because I would guess the winner would probably be the number one seed, unless Michigan's the number one seed, but it's going to be at least the third best team in college football. So... Um, I think it'd be a disappointment. I really do. Um, the SEC champ is probably going to be at worst the second best team, the second ranked team. So if Michigan's 13, no, they'll be at worst the second best team. So there you go. There's your top two. So you either have a conference runner up or you've got, uh, you know, uh, a conference champion maybe in the scenario that lost a game, you know, and then you've got an undefeated team from another conference. We'll see. But I still would be disappointed. I still would be disappointed if Michigan got there and lost to an Alabama or Georgia. Those teams aren't bringing back their starting quarterback. Um, like Michigan is. Georgia's going to have a hell of a defense. A lot of questions on offense outside of Brock Bowers. Alabama's got a lot of questions, but a lot of talented players. Who's their quarterback? Who's their running back? Their wide receiver crew hasn't really stepped up the last last season and going into this season. So I would be disappointed considering how much and how deep this Michigan football team is. Because for me, it's Houston or bust. It really is. H-O-B. It's going to be the new mantra. So if you guys want to just type something sometime, the live chat, the on-demand, outside of Bosa, outside of Go Blue, um, Type H-O-B, Houston or bus. We might just get shirts, Jack. We might just get shirts that say Houston or bus and wear them all offseason. That's what I have. It's the national championship game, uh, second week of January, Monday night. Michigan needs to be in there, or I think this season could be considered a disappointment by a lot of people, myself included. Cody Monfer, a hard hat guy, says, James, do you believe our pass rush will be able to help cover up our obvious number two cornerback issues? Jack, if we've got our depth chart, we popped that as well, showed my defensive depth chart really quick. Um... We're going to talk about depth chart here in a second on the live show, but this a D line depth chart, yeah. So um, you're right in saying that Michigan's secondary is kind of unproven at that second cornerback position. I think Omarion Walker, Jaden McBurrows, et cetera. But look at this defensive depth chart right here. Um, Michigan's backups in the interior, uh, Ray Sean, Trap Money Benny, and Kenneth Grant, uh, could start for probably uh, 122 out of 130 teams in college football in the interior. I got Josiah Stewart come over from Coastal Carolina, beating out Derek Moore, the sophomore, right? But Moore could be a starter for a lot of teams this year. Jalen Harrell, returning starter on the defense end. So there is a chance that this group of starters and this group of backups could be the deepest and maybe the most productive that Michigan's had in a long, long time, if not ever. So Michigan needs to have that because until you get a proven second cornerback, um, and Michigan's had that the last couple of seasons, right? After the 2021, we didn't know what we get from corner. 2022, of course, DJ Turner steps up. Jamon Green has a big step up in his uh, you know, his final year at Michigan and then the emergence of Will Johnson. Now it's just Will Johnson. Mike Sanders still might dabble here or there, but he's still more of a safety nickel type guy. Um, I do think the defensive line will be the strength of this year's team. Uh, maybe all together, right? Even up there as good as running back for the depth and the talent they have. I'm looking for a big year out of uh, quite a few players, but Mason Graham, the interior, uh, and then I really think that uh, Josiah Stewart coming off the outside could be one of the better combos Michigan's had, maybe ever. Cason Scott says, who's the breakout player on defense? Um, Mason Graham, although I don't think he will have crazy stats because guys in the interior never get you know, 10, 12 sacks, it's because they're there more to fill up space. They're there to take on two different players, three different players, uh, make the quarterback uncomfortable up the middle, make him roll out and not have a clean pocket. So I think Mason Graham, even though it'll kind of be his second year starting, his first year starting really the whole season, uh, he is someone that I expect to just kind of level up his game to an all Big Ten first team player. Um, but I think people are going to like what they see out of Josiah Stewart there at the linebacker position. On the other side of the ball, could this be, I'm sorry, the, the secondary, could this be the time where Rod Moore goes from being a very solid safety to being an all conference and a playmaking safety? I think it's yet to be seen, but uh, he is one of the more tenured players on this team. And still, he has two years left that he could be in a Michigan football uniform. So those are the guys I'll say, but I'll put my money right now on Mason Graham. Look at that picture. 
Beat Ohio State again. I love it. So if you uh, guys have been with me since day one on the Beat Ohio State again train, type it in the comments. We can't let up, right? We cannot let up on this mantra. So we've got two now. So I want to tell you about them both as we are, uh, you know, coming up on, uh, you know, the dog days of spring and into summer for this program. But we cannot let the pedal off the metal. It's beat Ohio State again every single day of the year. Give me a boast like Case and Scott did down in the comments or the live chat. Bill Graves, what ratio of run pass do you see this year? Um, I talked about the, the 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 pluses and minuses of Corman Edwards being out this offseason in the past couple weeks. Uh, pluses, you got to see what you had at the other running back positions. Other pluses, you got to allow J.J. McCarthy to be a little more free, like focus more on the passing game, where Jim Harbaugh probably hasn't done that as much in the past as Michigan's head coach. You're not going to give all those first-team reps to Benjamin Hall or Cole Cabana or Kalel Mullings uh, because you know we have an Edwards and Quorum. So Michigan focused a lot more on downfield passing, and Cornelius Johnson had a hell of a spring. Roman Wilson continued to improve as a downfield passer and really solidified himself to be on the field more because last year, even though he was a starter, he would only play about half the snaps because he wasn't uh, really seen as a, as a deep threat and couldn't run all the different routes that Michigan had. Going into this year, though, I think they're going to try and get it more towards 50-50. It will be a still run-focused team. I think where Michigan needs to improve is the passing game in the red zone without question. Of course, the running game without Blake Corum really struggled as well. But I think it'll be as close to 50-50 as we've been in the Jim Harbaugh era because he knows what he has in J.G. McCarthy. And he knows this probably could be McCarthy's last year. If he you know, is a, projected as a first-round pick, um, and once the season starts, he would likely go pro. After that, what happens to this team? You always know you can go back to that ground rate offense if you're you know, breaking in a new quarterback. I'm going to go 46% passing, 54% running. Uh, if you take out the first three games of the year, so start with Big Ten games only, I'm going to be right at 50-50, but I've been proven wrong in the past thinking Michigan would break out this new passing game, and they ultimately didn't end up doing it. Thank you so much to Bill Graves. Thank you so much to everyone who watched this Michigan football mailbag. 